Hi dear students, welcome back to one more session of microbiology and we are going to continue our trail of microbiology scientists. The hot topic of today is Dr. Eldridge's magic bullet. I would like to introduce you to uh, one of the movies which was being uh, which was released in 1940. It is a black and white movie which lasts around uh, two hours and it depicts the story of uh, Dr. Elrich, uh, a scientist, okay, it's basically a doctor who considered it, uh, it was not immoral to search for a drug that would cure syphilis. If you go to look into this particular uh, movie it's quite interesting and you can we come across the different pains as well as the uh, ups and downs which a doctor a medical doctor faces when he is amidst uh, the situation of syphilis diphtheria and various other diseases and this is none other than paul elrich the father of our modern chemotherapy. The movie starts mainly with introducing Paul Elrich as a doctor who is working on stains. A person who is trying to find out uh, how different stains can dif help us to differentiate between uh, different cells. He worked in the fields of hematology. And he is proposing that uh, every cell has a, a specific ability or a specific affinity for a particular stain. And uh, the use of different stains can thus be help to or can aid to identify different types of cells. Later on, we come across uh, Paul Elrich who is working on immunology and who's working on antimicrobial chemotherapy and uh, Paul Eldridge he is mainly credited uh, for finding a cure for syphilis in 1909 and the precursor technique to identify gram staining bacteria was also being credited to Paul Eldridge that is the basic techniques which further led into gram staining was credited to Paul Eldridge. Now, what is the hematological contributions of Paul Eldridge? As I mentioned earlier, uh, every cell has a different affinity for different stains. And the concept of this was being laid forward by Paul Eldridge. And when he stained cells with different types of uh, stains, uh, like methylene blue and all that, he could found that uh, the WBC cells, or the white blood cells, they had a different granulation pattern. And based upon this granulation pattern, he was able to distinguish between the non-granular lymphocytes as well as the mononuclear lymphocytes and all that. Isnophils, granulocytes and mast cells. And uh, during those days itself, uh, Paul Eldridge was associated with Robert Koch. He happened to have an association with Robert Koch who was working on mycobacterium or the tubercle bacillus which causes uh, tuberculosis. And those days to view a bacteria under the microscope, uh, it was not that easy because the, uh, the bacteria has been found to be transparent. And so there is an incident which is, being, uh, which is shown in the movie saying that Robert Koch is uh, showing his tubercle bacillus through the microscope. And he's saying you have to be keen enough to watch through it. Only then you can see because it is uh, it is transparent. Okay. So that time a scientist stands up and say what if the bacteria was being given some stain or so that it will accept a dye or a stain to which it has affinity. And that time uh, you can see Koch, Robert Koch mainly encourages Paul Eldridge saying, if you find that you will have a history in the, of, you will have a place in history of science. That's what he had remarked at that time. 
and later on for Elroch uh, by serendipity he developed a technique by which mycobacterium tuberculosis could be stained and it could be viewed through the microscope and this staining technique uh, that thus developed during those days helped to identify the people who are having tuberculosis so by taking a sputum sample and staining it the presence of mycobacterium tuberculosis in the sputum could be identified. So the staining technique uh, helped to diagnose numerous blood diseases also uh, due to the contributions of Paul Eldridge. And as I told earlier, he got associated with Robert Koch in Berlin for the development of the tuberculosis therapeutic agent uh, called tuberculin also. See, when he was working with tuberculosis itself, Paul Eldridge also happened to get uh, tuberculosis himself and uh, a therapeutic agent, tuberculin, was also being developed and uh, uh, Robert Koch was the main pioneer who was working on tuberculosis. But Eldridge, what he did is he even injected himself with the medicine called tuberculin. Now, what is tuberculin? It was a purified protein derivative, uh, which is a combination of proteins used. And now, it this tuberculin protein is mainly being used as a diagnosis for tuberculosis. It is a skin test. So, uh, if you go to look into Paul Eldred's life, he is a scientist who is uh, dedicating his own life for science. He gets to discover... Uh, different techniques to determine the presence of microbes he was working and he gets infected and at the same time he also tries to find a cure to it and uh, one of the uh, major contributions of Paul Eldridge another contribution is the discovery of arsifenamin or salvacin which was the first effective medical treatment against syphilis Syphilis is a venereal disease which has been transmitted during uh, sexually transmitted disease and uh, no one much uh, like it has been considered to be a bad disease but even against such bad diseases which was considered to be of a socially uh, which was considered to be as a social crime okay syphilis the people who had syphilis were not considered to be as good people those days but even though that time it was Paul Elrich who tried to find out an effective medical treatment he found out a drug called the Cervacin and that was there's a concept of chemotherapy was being introduced another thing that which we come across about Elrich is the concept of magic bullet now what is magic bullet I'll be continuing in that and we can also see that in a later stage uh, he comes, he develops an antiserum to combat diphtheria and uh, he developed a method for standardizing therapeutic serums. So, if I go to look into this concept of antiserum, okay. Paul Eldridge was a scientist who travels a lot and uh, once he got tuberculosis, uh, there was a period at which he had to travel to Egypt as a part of a uh, uh, and he was forced to take rest over there. And so he happened to come across uh, an Egyptian who's been bit by a snake uh, several times. But he is getting immunity against the, the snake venom. But one of his kids uh, who's already been uh, uh, bitten by the snake gets infected and the kid dies. But the parent who was being in a, who was being bit by the snake several times do not feel much of the mm, what after effects of the venom on his body so this instigated paul elrich uh, to find out what was the concept behind that and so he found out that, uh, so he had an intuition that something within the blood was protecting that man against the snake venom so he started working on snake venom and that was the time at which uh, Condybacterium diphtheria, uh, which causes diphtheria, was prevalent uh, and many children were dying. So though he was being uh, criticized for working on snake venom by Emil von Behring 
another counter scientist of his uh, at that particular time, a friend also of his. Uh, Paul Eldridge is continuously working on snake venom and he found that a particular quantity of the snake venom antitoxin, okay, an antitoxin against the snake venom is needed to overcome or to combat the effect of the venom. So he applied the same principle in the case of developing an anti-serum to combat diphtheria. And they injected horses to get these anti-serum in sufficient quantity. And they uh, injected the children who were being affected by diphtheria with the anti-serum. So this technique of developing anti-serum to, uh, to combat various diseases was being uh, laid forward by Paul Eldridge. So you come across different things here. He started with staining techniques. Then he put a method by which he could identify tuberculosis. And then he found out a therapeutic agent called tuberculin against tuberculosis. He found out a, a chemical called arsifenamin or selvarsin, uh, which was an effective chemical treatment for syphilis. And the concept of chemotherapy was laid forward by Paul Eldridge. And then comes the other one, the antiserum against uh, diphtheria, uh, which is a method of, and he method, and he also made a method to standardize the therapeutic serum. Now, the next one, which I would like to say is about the magic bullet. Once he get attained uh, success therapies or success stories with the uh, various chemical agents, Paul Eldridge uh, put forward a concept that probably we could make a magic bullet. What is a magic bullet? He said that if a compound could be made uh, such that it is selectively targeted a disease-causing organism, then a toxin for that organism could be delivered along with the agent of the selectivity. That is, if, if you go to take a particular disease-causing organism and if you want to... Uh, kill that particular organism might be you can direct something uh, or you can use something uh, which is a bullet like thing which is targeting onto that particular organism and if that target is also being associated with a, a toxin the organism could also be killed with selectivity at that time uh, the, this concept of magic bullet was something uh, something which was weird and no one accepted it but later on, we can find that even now we uh, follow the principles of magic bullet. Now, if you have like, uh, we we know that we develop antibody coated drug conjugates. Now, sometimes uh, what is an antibody? An antibody is something which has been produced within our body against an antigen. And so, uh, if the antibodies which we produce are being conjugated or linked together with some toxin, probably we can directly selectively kill the antigen also. And such type of uh, antibody drug conjugates are right now used in cancer cells also. That is, we direct uh, antibody cells which are being found to be what? Complementary to the antigen or might be in the cancer cells which are complementary to the cancer cells. And these antibodies, when they are being linked together with a toxic element will kill only that particular cells selectively. And so the concept of a magic bullet which was being put forward by Paul Eldridge is even now being carried out or it has been practiced. And he was, he received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his contributions in immunology and he also proposed a side chain theory which mainly uh, helps us to say that according to the different uh, type of uh, antigens which are being formed, the cells within our body will produce certain uh, molecules, surface molecules, which are being found to be complementary to the antigen and uh, they will compact with the antigen and try to neutralize it. That was the concept of uh, Paul Eldridge side chain theory. Now, what is that? Today we know that those days it was not accepted, but today we know that uh, when an antigen happens to come into our body, okay, let it be a bacteria or virus or something, on the surface of the back of the pathogen, there would be certain surface markers. They are called the antigens. And corresponding to that, some of our blood cells, the B lymphocytes, will produce antibodies. 
and these antibodies are secreted from the B lymphocytes and they go and bind to the antigen and try to kill the antigen. So the side chain theory which Paul Eldridge had depicted long back is now con con is being true in our knowledge because the antibody mediated immunity is being uh, is the one which was tried to be depicted by the side chain theory of Paul Eldridge. So uh, this is about Paul Eldridge. Uh, I hope you all had a good idea. So his areas mainly he started with hematology, then he moved on to immunology, antimicrobial chemotherapy and because he introduced a first chemical treatment uh, of the syphilis drug and based upon his contributions, uh, he is also being considered to be as the father of the modern chemotherapy. Now, if you move on to the other scientists who are having similar contributions in the medical field, we come across Alexander Fleming. We are all familiar with Alexander Fleming. Uh, he is mainly known for the discovery of penicillin. Uh, it is an antibiotic which is mainly being produced by Benzelium notatum. And uh, he found that when he grew certain bacterial cultures on the petri dishes in a hospital where he was working, some of the fungal spores, uh, some fungal spores were producing something. They were, uh, in fact, the petri plate was contaminated. Okay, uh, a fungal spore happened to contaminate this plate, and the bacteria around the fungal colony was not able to grow properly compared to the other areas. So he had uh, saying that something was produced by this fungus so, so that it inhibited the growth of the bacteria and he isolated that substance penicillin from the fungus on the petri dish and that is the first antibiotic which was being used and so he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1945 along with uh, Howard Florey and Ernst Boris Chains and the discovery of penicillin, as we know, is a very important landmark in the history of medicine, for the especially to increase the healthy living of man. Another contribution of Alexander Fleming is the discovery of the enzyme lysozyme. Also, after Alexander Fleming, we have another uh, scientist, Salman Waxman. He is considered to be as the father of antibiotics. And he isolated more than 15 antibiotics, including streptomycin, which was the first effective treatment for tuberculosis. And if you go to look into uh, Salman Waxman, he in fact developed a, a technique called the submerged culture technique for the large scale prediction of streptomycin. Streptomycin uh, is an antibiotic and if uh, those days tuberculosis was being found very much prevalent and to discover or to get a remedy against tuberculosis, uh, the antibiotic streptomycin was in much need. So, uh, to produce a large quantity of this, a submerged culture technique was being developed by Salman Waxman and because he isolated more than 15 antibiotics, he is considered to be as the father of antibiotics. And in 1952, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine and uh, his lab uh, was uh, developed a new pharmacological research area specializing in drug discovery. So these are the different scientists uh, which we have in the medical field and in the chemotherapeutic developments which were being possible uh, with the help of microbiology. So I hope you got a good idea of all these three scientists. So mainly we started with uh, Paul Elrich, we have Selman Waxman and also we also told about Alexander Fleming. So thank you for now.